Hi, Ant here here. I've set myself quite a challenge today. I'm going to try the hazelnut tort on page 328. And there's a lot of steps um, and a lot of preparation. Uh, so it's not the type of recipe I would normally do, but I need to try it and see how it turns out. Uh, the eggs need to be separated, eight eggs, so I've got to do that. I've already um, lined the springform pan with greaseproof paper, that took a while. So I'll run through the steps and uh, show you the result and uh, see how it goes. So the first egg I separated, the yolk broke. <laughs> so then I got nervous and made sure I cracked each one into a separate bowl before um, combining the, the whites in one bowl and the yolks in another. So they're, they're all ready to go now, eight eggs separated and uh, I'll, I'll start the process. The uh, hazelnut tort I'll look it up by A to Z, I think. That should be fastest. There's one at taught. Uh, greasing, I've done that. Sugar, hazelnuts, eggs, etc., uh, etc. Et and the filling is done separately. All right. Uh, preparations done. So other preparations done so I can get the oven going. And away we go. Wow, that always impresses me. Milling with the sugar. Awesome. Alrighty. Next step is 250 grams of hazelnuts, and I ended up getting um, both blanched and um, all ones. So, there we go. And because I used um, some hazelnuts for something else the other day, uh, I've made up out of both packets and I've got uh, half a dozen hazelnuts left for decorating the cake at the end. Okay. Ten seconds on speed seven. Transfer that to a separate bowl. As in separate to the sugar and set aside. Ooh. And then clean the bowl. Now because we're about to do the egg whites it really is important to clean uh, the bowl. You don't want any of the oil from the nuts sabotaging your fluffy egg whites. So that's done and then we put in the butterfly whisk which can go a couple of different ways. Put it on, turn it and try to lift it to make sure it's secure. Um, and then we put in the egg whites, which are at room temperature. Okay. I've added a pinch of salt. And the next step. Two minutes on three and a half. Now that was two minutes and the peaks aren't uh, what they describe as stiff peaks yet so I'm going to do it a bit more. It says you can um, do it for up to four minutes. Uh, you may need to do it for up to four minutes to, to get the texture right so I'll just do it again. Yes that looks much better. And so we take out the butterfly whisk. I'm reversing the direction that we put it in. And transfer the egg whites to another bowl. I'm ending up with a lot of bowls here. Uh, in preparation now for the next step. You know, I can't help but think of my mother um, and her cooking efforts without a Thermomix. She was actually a kitchen maid uh, before she got married, so she did all of her beating with a little hand beater, and uh, I reckon it would have taken her longer than four minutes to beat up eight egg whites so until it looked like that. So I'm very lucky to, uh, to be able to cook without having to do it all by hand. The next step is to put the egg yolks in the bowl. And 40 grams of water. And 
reserved sugar. minutes on speed five. Ooh, that looks creamy. Um, and now we start adding the dry ingredients, the corn flour, the flour and the hazelnut meal. Okay, so that's um, 60 grams of corn flour, uh, 40 grams of plain flour and a tablespoon full of um, baking powder. It's not a lot of flour, 100 grams for eight eggs. Um, and with the hazelnut meal, I guess that's what makes it um, low gluten. So we'll see what it's like. And 20 seconds on speed five. That's what it looks like. I think I might just scrape down some of that hazelnut meal. And then we need to put in a third of the reserved egg whites and uh, stir that gently on reverse um, to mix it and then pour the mixture into the rest of the reserved egg whites and combine it by hand. Okay. Five seconds on speed two. Okay, we might do it for another five seconds just to uh, get a bit more chance to mix. We don't want to overdo it, of course, because you lose all the benefit of the. Um, last for the egg whites, but just another one, I reckon. Yeah, that's that's mixed it a bit better, and now we put it into the rest of the egg whites, fold it together using a metal spoon, taking care not to overwork the mix. All right. Of course, I have no idea how this is going to turn out because I don't really know if I've done it right or not. Um, the mixture from the Thermomix is quite thick and the egg whites are so light and fluffy and I don't want to overmix it. The egg whites had um, separated a bit. Well, not separated, but there was liquid in the bottom of the bowl as well as the fluffy part on the top. So I've tried to mix it all up and uh, I've put it in the spring form fan spring form pan <laughs> to uh, to cook it and yeah because uh, I've not done it before we'll all see how it goes now into the oven for 50 minutes the cake is baked the washing up's done the next step is to prepare the filling uh, while the cake cools and uh, that's cream and caster sugar the egg and some coffee so I'll do that now well, firstly, I turned the Thermomix off while I was doing the dishes, and so I want to resume my recipe. Okay, that's been done. I put in the egg. hundred grams of caster sugar. And ten grams of granulated coffee. That's actually quite a lot of coffee, more than I thought. Twenty seconds on speed eight. Okay, I have to scrape down the sides and put in the butterfly whisk and then the cream. Okay, that's that. The book says that if you like lots of filling, you can make two batches. Um, I'll see how much it makes. Well, I think one will be enough. 
Okay, put the speed selector on three, and this means more instructions. Uh, watch through the hole and avoid over whipping. Okay. In this case, I've done it for two minutes and I think it looks about right. Uh, it seems to be holding its consistency. I've found in the past that um, 600 mils of cream, uh, I get it to whipped up in about two and a half minutes. So I did this, it's a bit less, 500 mils. I did it for two minutes and I reckon it's all right. My cream seems much darker than the picture in the book and I actually don't think it was a good idea to weigh the coffee in because um, uh, it took ages put in so much coffee before the scales registered um, even five grams so uh, uh, maybe a tablespoons full of coffee well, would be a better idea instead of saying to weigh the uh, the coffee in but uh, anyway now uh, put the cream in the fridge and keep it cold until it's time to assemble the cake yes unfortunately my cake is too brown on the top um, and that's because I had the oven uh, on the wrong setting when I put it in. But I adjusted it after a few minutes. It just meant that the top got too brown and um, I will be able to cut that off uh, in preparation for serving and cover, cover it with the cream.